Thank you to Dr. Wilder for preparing this video. For the sake of this instructional video, we'll first use a pencil to visualize the facial lingual extent of the proximal box. These walls may need to be extended further depending on the extent of decay. Ideally, there should be about 0.5 millimeters of clearance between where these walls exit and the adjacent tooth, but we'll get into that more later. After anesthesia and isolation, use a burr and a high-speed handpiece to create the initial punch cut where the caries is most involved. A good guideline is to drop somewhere between half and full length of a 245 burr, which is just shy of 3 millimeters in length, putting you just inside the dentin layer. Extend mesial and distal, and buccal and lingual, along the natural grooves of the tooth to incorporate the extent of disease until you reach sound tooth structure. After completing the occlusal step, slowly approach the proximal surface that's affected by interproximal decay. Place a wedge under the proximal contact prior to preparing the proximal box, which has several advantages. It moves the teeth slightly apart to increase proximal clearance and decrease the likelihood that you nick the adjacent tooth. Center the burr over the dentin enamel junction and make a ditch cut along the DEJ, moving back and forth while extending gingivally. Gradually and carefully move the burr toward the adjacent tooth until you break through the enamel shelf. You should see the burr start to poke through as the remaining proximal enamel gets thinner and thinner. Make sure to use a firm finger rest and be especially careful not to contact the adjacent tooth during this step. Check within an explorer that you have clearance between your prep and the adjacent tooth, although take note that a wedge will make the clearance seem more than it actually is. Go back and correct axial depth and extend the facial and lingual walls as needed. Remember, we want around 0.5 millimeters of clearance facially, lingually, and gingivally to provide the best possible matrix band placement and ultimately proximal restoration. We also want the facial and lingual walls to exit from the proximal tooth surface at 90 degree angles. That is, a 90 degree angle should be formed between the wall and the natural tooth surface. Here you can see that the exit angles in the second preparation are closer to the ideal 90 degrees than the first. We can now remove the wedge and smooth the preparation walls. Due to the round shape of the burr, it's very likely that you'll leave hooks or spurs of enamel at the corners of the proximal box. So return to and refine the proximal box, smoothing both the gingival floor and axial walls with an enamel hatchet and other hand instruments as needed. Using the tip of a 169L burr or quarter round burr, you can prepare retention grooves at the corners of your proximal box just inside the dentin enamel junction to improve retention. You can verify this with an explorer tip to see if it catches. A matrix band is used to encircle the entire tooth. We are using a Toffelmeyer band here, which is 0.002 inches thick. With a ball burnisher or the rounded end of a black spoon, thin out and round the band so that you can reproduce the most accurate proximal contact when it's time to restore.
fold the matrix band together and verify that the curvature of the band is adequate. Loosen the outer knob of the Toffelmeyer retainer to back up the pin that holds the band in place. Slide the end of the matrix band into the diagonal slot. Then tighten the outer knob to secure the band in place. Adjust the inner knob as needed to modify the diameter of the matrix band. Fit the matrix band carefully over the tooth, making sure that the bottom of the band goes below the gingival floor of your proximal box so that there is no gap. Once the band is properly positioned and tightened, place a wedge under the gingival margin between the tooth and the matrix band to secure the band against the tooth. You can also burnish the band against the adjacent tooth at this stage. After loading a triturated mix of amalgam into the amalgam carrier, insert it into the base of your proximal box and occlusal step. With the small end of the condenser first, compact the pliable mass of amalgam against the internal line angles of the preparation. Place new amalgam as needed and condense firmly and thoroughly to ensure that no voids are present. Be especially sure to condense adequately in the deeper proximal box area. You can overfill the preparation with another batch of amalgam to ensure that there will be no shortage of material and to ensure that there will be no ledge between the amalgam and natural tooth after condensation is completed. With a ball burnisher, you can pre-carve or smooth the surface while simultaneously condensing and removing excess. This helps to form a more cohesive mass while the amalgam is still in a softer stage. Use a high volume suction device to remove any excess. Use an explorer on an angle with the tip resting against the matrix band to start carving the occlusal embrasure while the amalgam is still pliable. With a cleoid discoid instrument, you can carve the anatomy of the grooves and fossa. Always make sure that part of the instrument is on the tooth surface and part is on the amalgam. Always move the working end of the instrument parallel to the cavo surface margin. You can also use the cleoid end to carve the marginal ridge area and define the occlusal embrasure. The carving process should take place while the amalgam is setting. After loosening the outer knob of the retainer, detach the retainer from the matrix band. Then, with a hemostat or pliers, carefully pull up on the matrix band to slide it out from each proximal contact. Using an amalgam knife, you can carve the facial and lingual embrasures and adjust the occlusal embrasure as needed. With the wedge removed, you can also use the amalgam knife to contour the gingival embrasure in case there is any overhang. However, be careful not to gouge the amalgam in this area.
At the end of setting, you can perform some post-carving burnishing to solidify and further highlight the primary anatomy of your restoration. See the Class 1 Amalgam video for details about polishing your final restoration. Thank you so much for watching, we'll see you in the next video.